Okay, so don't fold yet, but the first step is to make a diagonal fold. Don't make it yet. I'll say fold when it's time to fold. This is the most common mistake that people made to not fold in the right way. So the key thing to know is where you left the chalk. Here it is. Okay. Once you know that, your card has a number on it, or maybe it's a letter if it's like a K or a Q or something. Um, I cut a big slot most of the way through one diagonal, except for one part. There's a small slot here. I do a whole deck at a time on a bandsaw, so it's really fast and easy for me to do this. You can do this with scissors, but it, it takes longer than you think. And you want to cut like two parallel slots a half millimeter apart, not just one slot for it to fit well. On the saw, it automatically removes a little bit, and it's really fast and easy. So this diagonal we're going to call the cut diagonal. Okay? We're not going to call it the folding diagonal. This is the one that's cut. You're going to have to fold, don't do it yet, on the other diagonal. Okay? The folding diagonal is the one that goes through the two numbers or the two letters on your card. Do not fold on the cut diagonal. It's mostly cut, so it's going to naturally want to do that. You have to not do that. You're going to cut. I mean, you're going to fold on the folding diagonal. Those are numbers and numbers. And then there's two ways to fold. You can fold something to bring the numbers together, or you could do it to bring the red parts together. I want you to bring the red parts together because on the, the red is going to be on the inside. The outside is going to show this. But don't do it yet. Now, when I'm doing this in a classroom that's got a lot of tables, there's a handy trick, which you're not going to do, is to line this up along the edge of the table and then sort of push down and you can line it up nicely and use the table to start a crease. So if you have rulers, you can do that. <laughs> we happen to not have tables and not have rulers for you, but there is another way to do it, okay? So, that's, and you're not going to do it yet. <laughs> you're going to think red down, you're going to think number to number, not to cut the angle. If you hold this in the air, and you don't want to rip it, and you're not doing this yet. You're going to hold this, and you're going to gently fold and sort of bring it together, aiming to go right into the two corners. And then you can do this in the air and just sort of push it and then extend the fold so that you end up with a nice fold. And then there is a flat thing on your table. You can rub it down with your fingernail to get a nice crisp fold. It looks nicer the crisper, the more geometric your fold is. You don't want a wavy, crazy thing. Okay, so I'll show you one more time, and then you're going to be loud. You're not going to do it yet. <laughs> You're simply going to take this. I'm, I'm aiming from number to number. I'm not folding on the cut diagonal. And I'm at the same time pushing both ends, squeezing it flat, and then pressing it, and then using my table, uh, sort of creasing with my thumb, burnishing it, so to speak, uh, to give me a nice fold, red to red. Fold. <laughs> And if you work in pairs, the next step will be easy. Slot and a short slot. 
two on X edge, long and short. So that means we do not put long to long, we do not put short to short, we just put long to short. Which you, if you just have three cards, that's enough to start. Um, ideally, you want it open to roughly 60 degrees or so. You can't work if it's totally flat, and you can't work if it's totally flat. It should be, if you folded it all the way uh, over 180 over itself, and then open it up about 60, it, it naturally goes there to decrease it. Um, I can then put together a long and a short. So just make the long slot of one, the short of another, put a collinear, slide them towards each other, as I'm doing here, and uh, it'll slide right in until uh, it comes right up to, the, the, the edge of one comes up to the fold of the other. And when I do that, there's two choices. I could slide in one way, or I can give this 180 degree twist and slide in, still having the long and short together. The one that's correct is the one that I'm holding up. It's possible to orient this so that you can see most of the two cards. You can see the long diagonal of two cards sort of facing, and in this case I'm holding them facing up, or I can hold them facing you. So we're just putting the long and the short together. That's perfect, that's perfect, um, that's perfect. That's sort of upside down, it's still. That's perfect, that's perfect. That's, uh, one of those is upside down. Uh, that one's perfect, let's do what he has over there. So, see, that's perfect. And I'm holding them, I find it's convenient, sort of a reference orientation, to keep the pictures facing up, the red facing the floor. There's a way to do that. It's just sort of, yeah, that's perfect. So we're just putting two together. Uh, yes, this is great. Okay, and then the challenge is, how do I add a third one? So the third one is the only hard step. Okay, this is the tricky part. That's really hard until you've done it, and then it becomes trivial. But this is the one thing that you'll know you learn because at first it's hard, and at the end of the day it'll be easy. So, I put together a long and a short. Okay, and so at the end of the card there's already a long and a short of one card. I use the long of one and the short of the other. So I have left over in this pair the short of one and the long of the other. I'm going to take a third card, and it has a long and a short. And remember the rule: always long to short. So, I have a leftover long and a leftover short here. I can take the long of my new card and join it to the leftover short, but I also have to have the short of the new card join into the leftover long. And the way to do that, just watch me, is if I, I'm gonna hold these, the face near you, there's a short leftover, there's a long of the new card, I slide it in, and as it slides in, the points of this card actually goes into the slot, and it's gonna slide in, and it's, it's hard to do this standing up here, everyone watching, but as it goes in, it goes in, it clicks in, have to tuck it in, and then it makes a structure with three-way symmetry, okay? And this is the aha. Think of what I did here with the rigid wood. You remember how this wood went together? It's the same idea, except the wood is rigid. I'm gonna walk around and help you do this, but once you've learned how to do this, you've done everything. This is the only kind of joint in the whole structure. If a cube has eight of these square corners, you're gonna end up making eight of them by the time you're done, using 12 of your 13 cards. So I'm going to walk around and show you, but I see some people have it. If you have it, I want you to show your neighbor how you've done it. Okay, that's perfect. So show me how to your neighbors, and I'll also show you Okay, so this is perfect. Once you've got it, show your neighbor.
now you've got three-way symmetry. Okay, so you'll keep going to go to the long end here. But as soon as I go to do that, it's in the wrong way again. So there's going to be a point in which you close it up to make a set of four. Um, what happens to my three of spades? I had, a, I had a model here that I was showing. Did I leave it in someone's table? Four pieces to make more three-way joints until the whole thing is complete. Um, so let me, let me just sort of, and then I'll walk around and help you with your individual issues. <laughs> Stuart, full marks for participation. Oh, there, there's a short one there. 